Yeah. 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 Cool. They do not like this place getting warm. G'day! Good day! We are. We're on. Live. You can use all that. <laughs> no, I will edit it. Uh, my first question is can you give a short introduction? to the band Airborne for the few people who have lived under a rock and don't know you yet. Yep. Short introduction. Right. Yep. G'day, I'm Razy. G'day, I'm Streety. We're from Airborne. Wait, that, that was the question, now was it? <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the question? That, what was it? Uh, Is that what you wanted us to do? Just yeah, kind of. The, what, you want us to talk a bit about the band? Or? A bit yeah. about the formation or uh, how was the band okay. started? Oh, okay. Yeah, well, um, Band, we've been together for the, like 12 years. 12 years or so. Yeah, like, we all come from Warrnambool, yeah. which is a small uh, southwestern town from Melbourne in, in Victoria, Australia. Um, I used to work in a pub with Joel. That's where I um, first met him. You know, I think we're about 18, 19 at the time. Um, yeah, and he, his brother Ryan and he, they already had Airborne going just as a three-piece band back in the day and. We used to jam together after work, and we had the same interests in music and guitars. And and I remember um, Joey bringing his demos into work and showing me, and I was just like, "Wow, this is awesome! I love this!" You know, it was cool, raw rock and roll. Um, and yeah, they needed the rhythm guitarist, and that's when I joined the band and started. That's when my journey began. And I think Streety, how did you? I used to watch Airborne play um, with another bass player, and before it. Rosie had joined and then I watched his first gig, I remember that, it was pretty cool. And then I was like, fuck, I would like to be in a band like that that actually played and because I was in shitty fun bands. And then, <laughs> um, then they needed a bass player and I didn't even know it was them and I'm just like, oh yeah, and I was already friends with Ryan. And then I rang out and I'm like, yeah, I'll play bass for your band and then He's like, is that you, Streety? I'm like, yes. <laughs> is that you, Ryan? He's like, yes. Ah, oh, now I know what band you're talking about. Okay. So I came in and played some music, and we actually wrote Girls in Black that day. I remember that very specifically. Our first ever jam together. <laughs> and then um, I've been playing rock and roll ever since with these guys. Yeah. We moved to the city from there because we're in a small town, and we yeah. had to move to Melbourne to further our career. And and then it just grew and grew from there, you know, like 2005 was when we moved to Melbourne and that's when things, we just Start concentrated on. You know, um, Joel and I were working, we gave up our jobs. Australia and Ryan had just finished school and we all just went to Melbourne and just did nothing but airborne, you know, just gig as much as we could, meet as many people as we could, you know, in, in the industry and we just sort of grew and grew from there and then fast forward, here we are now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Played a lot of shows to the staff and yeah, stuff, showcasing stuff. But what? empty pubs. Where does the name of the band come from? Airborne. Um, Vision. Well, <laughs> the the name was there. Joel and Ryan come up with that name before we came into the band. But um, oh. I mean, I guess one of the ideas was I don't really know. I guess it it's was a just military a, thing. Come on. It was a bit of a military thing, but I just I guess it's yeah, I don't know. Just an easy name to remember, a good name, and sort of. Yeah, I once heard there was in the 70s also another band from Australia that was also named Airborne. Yeah. That's the only thing I know about them. I couldn't find anything about that and band. That one? Different but spelling now, I think. Yeah, that was... No, um, it was in the same spelling band. even. No. Also at OU. You're not Aus just looking at old pictures of us, are you? <laughs> <laughs> we look a bit different without our long hair and that. Yeah. Like, we've got, and our, and our we got old, man. Fringe cuts. <laughs> <laughs> we look like shit now. <laughs> We used to have useful good looks. Yeah. <laughs> there was the Airborne Toxic event, that was another band. The Airborne Toxic event, I think it was an American band that was... Right. We're definitely yeah, not them. Yeah. Uh, since your first album in 2007, the lineup of the band has always been the same. Yep. What's the secret in keeping a band together? Uh, I don't know, I guess we just all got the same drive, the same vision. Um, John and Ryan being brothers, uh, you know, they always have the little brother fights as we do, as you do with siblings, but we, um, oh, it just seems to work. I think on the road, we all sort of... Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's just um, I guess strong wills. Strong wills. Yeah, we just just all driven and got the same focus. Yeah. The same goal. And we just all, you know, it gets tiring on the road and all that, but it's um, you know, we keep it together and mm -hmm. it works. Helps when you know you're going, you're going pretty good, getting up there on the yeah. hills and the festivals and. Yeah, like you know, we've it, been yeah. growing and growing every more and more every album as well, and everyone's inspired and by that, and getting out over here and playing big festivals and playing to good crowds and just you know we have fun playing our songs and. But, um, that's very important. Yeah, having fun. In yeah, it. that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is really important. Mate. You need to, you know, you got to you got to write songs that you actually that are good and they rock and they're fun to play. Yeah. Next month you will release a new album called Breaking Out of Hell. I already listened to uh, some of the songs, and it, I got the feeling it's more powerful yeah, than the older work. I'm glad you yeah, got that yeah, feeling too. Definitely, because yeah. that's definitely I'm what going we. Going for that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, I think uh, just uh, the overall sounds, the the song structures and the the tones of guitars and drums are very big. Having Mike Fraser, yeah, um, mix the album. You know, he's very yeah. good at getting the album sounding huge. Um, yeah, and yeah, after all these years of playing, we've got better than, well, yeah, just honed yeah, in a bit more. Honed in our skills, yeah, which is natural, I guess. But, but yeah, we can all play our instruments better than we could every previous album. And this one, last one, we're going to go on for a, a big 80s ish kind of. Yeah, it's different. Dish Even thing. a few slower songs on it. Yeah, there's a few more slow, but they're still yeah. big, you know, like yeah. they might be mid, mid bombastic. tempo, but still bombastic. Bombastic, yeah, yeah you could call it that. But um, but like Sturdy said, like the last album, we sort of had a bit of a, you know, like there was a bit of an '80s element in some of the songs there. This album, we just went in there and go, let's, let's just do what we do, to what we do best, and make yeah. it big. Capture and the just energy and the... capture that energy there, that airborne sort of live energy, and just do, you know, we felt like just free to do that, and I, I felt that we achieved that in the end. Is that part of breaking out of hell? I guess it could be, yeah, you know. <laughs> well, we're with a new record label now on this new album, yeah. so working with them doing during this album was a, a good process. We felt like we weren't, I guess in some ways, we weren't dictated to, you know, write, you know, there was no sort of clashing between the band and label there. It was sort of just, we were, we just went and did what we did with the right guys like Bob Marlett and Mike Fraser. We had a great little team and it just worked well. Yeah, they gave us a lot more freedom, I think. They us, I think so, it was more freedom. They let us make our own decisions a bit more and weren't fighting us on every little Yeah, thing. yeah. Which, About Bob Marlett, how was it to work again with the producer of Running Wild? Yeah, great. It was, yeah, it was good. It was just like being back with the boys again, you know? It was just it's so good working with it. Well, it's our first time working with a producer for a second time, so it was just, it was all. You know, it was it, it just worked and it was meant to be. It's sort of like having people. like a friend there as well. He's good, good to talk to. And, you know, yeah, it's a good bloke. He's a very experienced producer Experience. as well. And he it's knows. Wise. Yeah, he knows what we are and as a band understands our music and it worked well. On your current tour. You're using the main title of Exterminator 2. Yep. As an intro. Is that the favourite movie of the band? No, just the. the oh, we do like that movie. We love all yeah. the old action <laughs> movies. But um, no, that was actually Joel's idea on the second album. We just we just wanted the. Uh, he just came up with the idea of having that as an intro, leading. I think we used to run out and play Raise the Flag off the second album to that song. It just worked so well. We just just wanted to keep just kept using it. You know, it just it's a good part of the set. Builds the crowd up. Works well with the lights, and then, and then it just it's a big explosive sort of entrance into the show, isn't it? Really. In a re uh, but yeah, but in a recent interview I read, you like movies also. To oh watch yeah. Movies. Yeah, we all all love our movies. We watch a lot of movies when we're driving around the countryside. Yeah, I can imagine that while on the road on tour. Yeah. yeah. Thank God for technology. Really, I don't know how they did it back in the day. With the, I guess just did lots and lots of drugs. <laughs> yeah, we just got screens in front of us now. Yeah. It's good to have a laptop on the road with a easier on the body. Couple of terabytes full of movies. But uh, did you see any good movies lately uh, that stand out? Watch a lot of TV shows, you know, like okay. uh, you know, I, I don't mind watching the Game of Thrones and sort of what else is there? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Robot. Um, what did I watch the other? Deadpool. I watched that the other Deadpool. day. That was cool. <laughs> yeah. Just watch anything, really. I just. 
we all share our hard drives and go, oh, what do you got on yours? And we just grab heaps of, cool, I haven't seen that before, I'll grab that and watch it. You just, you watch a lot of stuff on the road, really, when yeah. you're driving and traveling. Yeah. Like, as, as busy as you are, there's also a lot of sitting around time when you're driving all day, like yesterday, just on the road constantly. Yeah. So there's plenty of time. Yeah, I was also wondering, uh, a lot of your songs have been used in video games. Yep. Do you guys also play video games while on tour? Yeah, yeah, game a little bit. Yeah, Ryan used to game a bit. He hasn't been much on this tour, but we all like our games. Um, uh, so having our music on games, like EA games, is great. You know, it's a yeah. it's a modern form of modern radio in a way. Like uh, people of all ages are, are sort of gamers these days, so it's a good way of getting music out, which is good. Do you have uh, what is the favorite game uh, within the band? Um, I sort of like first per first person shooter games they call them, oh. or I don't like a bit of I don't mind sort of RPG type games, a bit of strategy and just anything I guess. I just if I don't like it I don't play it. If I do I do, you know. Yeah. I'm not I'm not like a real fussy gamer. Good way to fill time. Yeah, another good way to fill time, definitely. I heard rumors you will uh, be back in Europe soon to have a tour with Full Beat and Crowbot. Yeah, no, it's not a rumor. It's legit. It's it's all okay. Yeah, no, it's I wasn't sure. So yeah. <laughs> no, it's all gonna. Um, I think uh, when does it start? Like October the nineteenth is the first show. And we're doing like a month with Volbeat around various parts of Europe. Find all the dates on our website. Yes. <laughs> will you visit the Netherlands also on that tour? Will we go there? Yeah. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't know. You'd have to look at this. Yeah. What was the question? Uh, do we are we going to the Netherlands? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I, I, <coughs> there's that many shows. I I can't remember exactly what we're playing, but we're because we've got a lot of shows to play. Yeah. Look. Look it up. I look up the website right now. Technology. No. Sure. No. Sure. 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 But is there a, a, a band that uh, became special to you? Motorhead was always a special band, obviously, you know. Uh, Lemmy was very good to us, you know. Yeah, we, he was humble enough to, to be in our film clip for Running Wild, and, yeah, and sometimes when we did tours with him, he would sometimes have us into his band room and just to have a drink and a chat and tell us old Motorhead stories and just, you know, listen to music. ZZ Top? Yeah, he was loved his old blues music. and. ZZ Top. Old school ZZ Top music. Um, yeah, so he was he was very inspirational, very nice guy. You know, he was just and he he thought a lot of us and our music, and he sort of you know he was a good guy to listen to. Um, yeah, Iron Maiden were another great band that we did a we did six shows with them once around the UK. That was real fun. Really nice wow. guys, and really nice crew. We just you know, sort of amazing show every single yeah. Time. Oh, so it was good. good. So yeah, you know, they're just a couple of bands. I mean, a lot of them been really good, a lot of the bands have played with. Uh, I read in another interview that uh, one of the band members had a, a bit of a weird experience at the Download Festival, which uh, included policemen. Oh, uh, that would be Something with climbing? Yeah, that's Joel. Obviously yeah. Joel is known for climbing at festivals, climbing the trusts and all that sort of stuff. Uh, apparently they don't like it that much in the UK, so... They <laughs> yeah, they shut off the power. And yeah. Yeah. They, um, yeah, we had the power shut down and the whole show was sort of shut off and then the crowd, you know, were, like it. <laughs> was a bit of an outroar and then, and anyway, it all got switched back on. and it, Made for it, the coolest part of the yeah. show, it was awesome. It was the talk <laughs> of the festival apparently, so it was, uh, it was good for us in the, in the long run. It's a different but he's a real climber, I believe. Yeah, you know, well he's an entertainer. You know, we don't know what he's going to do, he does something different sort of every show. Um, he's just in that character when he's on stage and he'll do whatever it takes and, you know, just to entertain. <laughs> Unfortunately it gets us in trouble sometimes, but, uh, well, that's rock and roll. Now you also had to sign a CD, I believe. Sorry? the policeman at Download. We had the what, sorry? You had to sign the uh, autograph of the CD for oh, the, uh, yeah, the yeah. policeman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think there was a couple of police that were after standing around us in a circle and laying down the law and the rules. After all that was established, I think one of them was like, oh, can I get you to sign this for me? I'm a big fan, you know. <laughs> so it's yeah. pretty funny in the world. <laughs> Future plans besides making more records and doing shows? Um, at this stage, a whole lot of touring, you know. So. More touring, more writing, more records. Yep. Repeat. We've, we've just <laughs> lived on <laughs> <all> repeat. <laughs>
we've just started on this this album cycle, so the rest of this year we we're, we're out over here touring for until mid December, and then we've got some Australian shows, and then next year is a whole lot more touring, a lot of main touring, more festivals, more probably the headline tour to follow next year, and then cool. yeah, so we're just pretty busy for the next couple of years on this album, just just all playing, and then do an album as on the side as well as we go along, you know, for album number five, just keep writing and keep the ball going. Well, this is my last question. I'm writing. Uh, I'm writing for a website. It's called uh, Don't Be Shocked. Fuck. Dot NL. And that's written in Dutch. F O K. Fuck. Dot NL. Dot NL. Yes. Yep. Is there anything you want to say to the readers of Fuck. Dot NL? Um, never know what you're doing back there. Fuck. <laughs> Make love. <laughs> to all you readers of Fuck. Dot NL. Uh, thanks for all your support. Keep rocking. And I hope you enjoy the new album coming out. September 23rd, fuck it, fuck. <laughs>